Hello everybody, I'm Jerry's Doctor, and today we're going to talk about creating content and combating burnout. Now, this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while. My focus on this video has been to really bring attention to some things that people um, often overlook in the EVE community. And these are things that I think need a lot more attention. Um, so it's, it's taken a while to put this slide deck together. I wanted to make it uh, as engaging as I did pretty and so I've decided to steal some photos from NASA from the Hubble telescope. This is an actual photograph of the Lagoon Nebula taken by the Hubble telescope. And this is approximately 4,000 light years from Earth. This is extreme tight zoom in on the nebula, about 252 million AU from Earth. So why me? Why uh, should Jurius Doctor be the person to talk about creating content? Well, I'm a recruiter for Iron Armada, so I spend a lot of time talking to new bros or existing, you know, old bros who want to join our alliance, um, talking with people about, you know, reasons why I play the game and why they play the game, and really getting to know why they might want to join us. I'm also a staff writer for Imperium News. Uh, I've written about the, you know, the, the art of creating content, about diplomacy in the game, and I've interviewed a number of people who are content creators themselves. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about what makes content for people engaging, interesting, and engaged in this game in a way that we're able to create these amazing stories for the news. I'm also an occasional guest lecturer for Eve University. Eve University is where I got my start. I was a member of the teaching community there, and I was also a member of the event staff. So uh, creating interesting content, doing lore tours, these kinds of things were uh, activities that I recognized the value of very early on. And I'm a content creator for YouTube, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video here. Obviously, so far my focus has been on creating information-driven educational content and making sure that there's an emphasis on ease of understanding and trying new things. Because creating content for you guys is sneakily my way of staying engaged with the game and trying new things. But I generally try to keep busy enough to stay out of trouble. What brought me here? Well, Eve's an interesting game to play. I had avoided it for a long time. I was actually working in a computer store here in Canada when it first launched. I saw it sit on the shelves for a couple of years before I decided to try it. And I'd seen targeted ad placements for it too. You know, going back to the days of when it first launched, you know, uh, the, the death of GeoCities and the, the rise of, uh, of MMORPGs. I saw uh, EVE Online advertised, and I'd heard it was the most challenging MMO. Uh, at the time, the graphics were, you know, so-so, but still pretty. Uh, the ship models weren't nearly as intricate as they are now, but I'd heard good things about the battles and the community. And I knew somebody who played the game. And I, honestly, I was bored of other games. I was burned out. I was tired of Counter-Strike and, you know, Ultima Online and EverQuest and Star Wars Galaxies had suffered some pretty unfortunate turns of events in the time that I decided to start playing. So I, I realized I needed something new. And from being burned out, if it hadn't been for the content creators in this community, I would have left this game too. Um, I've, I've been through some interesting challenges in my life. I have a 17 year old. I've been through a divorce. I've remarried. I have a new child who's just 12 days old today, sitting just a couple of feet from me here with my wife. And, uh, you know, I've had some big changes. I've taken breaks from this game. Like many people have, um, took a year and a half break when I became a project manager and I'd taken breaks before that because I didn't have the money to pay the subscription, but Eve perniciously kept calling me back and I think content creators are a vital part of keeping this game vibrant active and healthy so what makes a content creator well there's three main categories of creators and people may disagree with me on this bear me out there's the content creators these are the people who actually make shit happen for other people these are your fleet and skirmish commanders, the people who are actually out there picking fights, punching people in the nose, and saying, hey, can we get a good fight going? There's the Alliance and Corporation leaders. These are the people who are setting up the scenario, creating the setting and the world and the politics and the engagement to make fights 
happen to make it worthwhile to say this guy is my friend and that guy isn't or i want the thing that that guy has so i'm gonna go and get it and without the alliance and corporation leaders keeping everything organized herding cats you wouldn't have anything to go do then there's the content enablers and this is a group that doesn't nearly get talked about enough these are people without whom this shit could not happen these are your logisticians and your venture capitalists. These are the people who go out and make sure that you have fits to fly, that you have modules to fit to your ships, that you have ammunition for your fights, that things are staged where you're going to go to get into that fight, to offer ship replacement policies, you know, SRP and payouts for mining fleets. These are the industrialists that build your ships and build those modules and make things available to you and sell to market so that your venture capitalists can buy out the things that they need or maybe you know, use their wallets to deny those modules and those ships to others against whom they're fighting. This also includes content peers and mentors. Now, mentors obviously fill the role of teaching you how to play this game. I would like to think of myself as a mentor, but then there's the content peers, and this is the group I definitely think doesn't get talked about the most, and they really deserve it because content peers are the people who always fucking show up. These are the people who in fleet, you ask for a saber, they've got one on an alt. You know, you need an extra capital, hey, they've got one standing by. Um, somebody needs an extra ship because maybe they, you know, didn't go out and buy their fits in time for the fleet or the strategic op. Guess what? They've got an extra one they can loan you. These are the people who are always prepared always in fleet, always there, and who are perma bros in the way of providing for the Alliance and Corporation for fleet and skirmish commanders. These are the people who are the special snowflakes, who can always be counted upon to have a jump destroyer ready to go, to have a bridge titan always sitting there ready and fueled. These are people without whom you couldn't have fleets. There wouldn't be enough of a solid body there to make that happen. And everybody at every scale of this game, every scale of corporation, even in small friend groups, these are the people who make content possible by virtue of showing up. And really, in a big way, um, they're the people who keep the rest of us engaged because they're the ones who are there on comms, who become our friends and familiar faces. They're the ones we talk to. They're the ones we hang out with. And they're the ones we, <laughs> we get so happy to see at FanFest in New Vegas. It's our peers that make the game worthwhile to play. Then there's the content producers. And these are people who like to show this shit off, Real, you know, really raising the level of awareness and knowledge so that we draw more people into the game and we keep people interested in the game and in what they can do. These are people like YouTube producers, you know, the the, the reloads, um, the, the Delone Wolves, uh, Johnny Pugh, um, even though he's gone now, you know, people remember the impact of people who showed them how to play this game. Twitch streamers are the new YouTube stars. They are the people who everyone just cannot wait to watch. They want to know what they're doing. They want to see how they're doing it. They want to learn and get excited about the game by watching their exploits. These people are the new rock stars and it's easy to become one because this is not a big community. And if you have an internet connection and a halfway decent computer, you can stream too. And I, I recommend that you give Twitch streaming a try, uh, but definitely remember to set a delay on your video. <laughs> then there's the podcasters and writers. And these are the people who raise awareness and excitement for the game by talking about it when it's not being played. Um, these people fill a special role and they're the ones who draw the attention of people outside of our community. They're the ones who get the story of it about the big fights, about the, the daring steals, about the dastardly double crosses and backstabs. And without them to talk about what's happening and why the community is so fantastic, you couldn't make this happen. Podcasters and writers are often also the ones organizing local meetups and local events. So thank you to everybody in this list. If you're a creator, you know, you deserve a pat on the back. You deserve uh, recognition and acknowledgement. And, you know, thank you for making it stay a vibrant game in a vibrant community. Now, when it comes to creating content yourself, if you want to join this community of content creators, it's very easy. You have everything you need to start creating content right now. You have something that you enjoy doing. 
This can be anything from mining to ratting to small gang fleets. You can even be sitting around with tinfoil on your heads talking about what's happening in the lore. People also like doing that thing. Talk to your friends, talk to your corpmates and your alliance members and find something in common that you like. And you have time to do the thing. You can find a time which doesn't conflict with other activities that are likely to distract or detract from your enjoyment. You know, in, in essence, don't go scheduling a mining fleet at the same time that there's a strategic operation that has to happen if you know you need to be there. But by the same token, if you give yourself room and you coordinate well with others, you can find a recurring time where something can work for you or you can spin something up on the go. And you have to ask yourself, what's the payout? What is the enjoyment or the benefit, whether tangible or intangible, that you'll get from doing that thing? It could be the isk that you make in mining. It could be the fun of getting, you know, green marks on your killboard. Or it could be the fun of just hanging out together and doing something while having the opportunity to chat in comms. But from there, how can you scale up? How can you grow your experience into something bigger or different? This is where you learn to contribute on a regular basis because once you've done something first and well or failed spectacularly because really failure is the best teacher you can then begin asking the questions how can i make this better how can i keep this success going and starting from this standpoint from these first five questions you can begin as a content creator when it comes to consuming content this is really the first and easiest way to stay engaged with the game. You can get out there and try something different. CCP is constantly putting new development in this game. Recently we've had Abyssal Dead Space sites, and many in-game events that are great instanced content. The Hunt, Blood Raiders events, the Secrets of the Abyss. These are all fantastic events that have basically been handed to us on a silver platter by CCP. Now, not everybody enjoys these events, and these events may not exactly align with what you want to do in the game, but if you're getting bored or burned out or tired, these are the low-hanging fruit. These are the easy things to reach for. You can also change your pace. Do something you haven't done or done in a while with more or less intensity. If you enjoy doing the Abyss sites, challenge yourself to doing them faster, getting a better payout, Maybe getting into building the ships, start building Triglavian tech, grind them until you find the modules you want. You know, you can change your intensity to change your enjoyment or your challenge from the activity. You can also engage in other activities like exploration, PvP, fleet mining. And I mean, really, you can sit around on YouTube and comment on the reloads, various YouTube channels, and, uh, you know, really drink that content in and see how you can get out there and do what they're doing to learn. You can join a community too, and community is really the core of this game. Community can mean the difference between getting excited, getting good at something, or simply getting gone. And I have to say that I, I would have left this game if it were not from the community, and the community really holds a special place in this game because there are so many open places that you can go out, like Bomber's Bar, learn how to fly the ships, X up for a public fleet, and just go out and have some good fun. There's also groups like the Incursion Community, which is an excellent way to make money in high sec. Groups like Warp to Me Incursions, the Valhalla Project, and others provide you the opportunity to go out and, you know, queue up for a fleet where you have the opportunity to make huge dank ticks. I mean, it's, it's if you're living in high sec, if you're not out in Nilsec and you're not, you know, doing things that are, are high income earners out there, this is an easy way for you to get in. You do have a bit of a skill queue to up into in order to fly in these, but it's not as hard as you may think. And you can get into doing incursions very quickly. You can also teach or mentor. And this is where I'll spotlight Eve University. Teaching others is one of the best ways to find out if you actually know something as well as you think you do. And yes, it's a tired quote that gets used way too much. But Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, how well do you know it? If you can help others to get better at this game, it is hugely rewarding from a teaching perspective, from a mentoring perspective, to know that you actually have your shit wired in. And you can always do something outside of EVE Online. If you find yourself getting tired of the content in the game, go do something more. You know, there's so much more opportunities in the real world that you can engage in that will refresh you for coming back to the game. 
so that when you come back, you've spent some of that, you know, latent energy, some of that restlessness somewhere else. You can't go kayaking in EVE Online. You can't climb a mountain in EVE Online. You can't go on speed dates in EVE Online. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do in the real world that until we have a singularity or an oasis style on awakenment, awakening of EVE Online, that you won't be able to do in this game. And you can even join a band. You know, there's lots of ways to engage with this community and engage uh, with the people who are producing content or you know, playing this game, uh, you can engage with them in a way that, that makes it more rewarding and makes it more fun to come back to every time you log in. But we have to talk about burnout and other obstacles that detract from the fun. And burnout really is one of the biggest factors that kind of paradoxically uh, affects those people who create content the most. A lot of people get into creating content because it's a way to amp up and increase their own enjoyment, but it can also be the fastest way to burn yourself out if you're not careful. So let's talk about the faces of burnout. Let's really look at what are the things that create um, this, this reduction in, in joy in playing. And burnout is a very real problem. Indecisiveness is a key clue that you're starting to get burned out. You know, if you're starting to get to the point where you're like, I don't know what I want to do right now. Don't really feel like doing anything else. Can't decide because, you know, you've tried those things, but maybe you haven't succeeded at them. You're not sure about how you want to get in. It really is um, kind of a key indicator if you find yourself being indecisive when you aren't otherwise an indecisive person. It's easy to kind of go ho-hum and everybody goes through periods like this. This isn't something where, you know, the first time you're indecisive, you should, you know, worry about, are you getting burned out? It's just where it becomes a trend. If you find yourself having increased aggression and hostility, that's another big clear flag that should let you know that maybe something isn't right. Maybe you're not enjoying things as much as you used to. If you have decreased pleasure from your activities, the old go-to activities and games just aren't rewarding. You know, if you find yourself playing Eve and you get bored after the fleet, so you log out and you go play some Fortnite and even that's starting to lose its fun. Maybe even the idea of sitting in front of a computer feels onerous. Then that decreased pleasure can be a sign that maybe it's time to take a little bit of a breather or try something different. If you suffer from increased insomnia and decreased sleep, if you find that you're having difficulty falling asleep or you don't not really interested in, in sleeping, this could be a real um, wake up call that maybe there's something about what you're doing that isn't sitting well with your normal rhythms. And if you find yourself having a lack of engagement in community events, in social events, or if you even start to find that your desire to eat or investing the effort to cook begins to shrink, if things just don't seem appetizing. That can be a real, real sign that, you know, maybe it's something other than yourself that is that is coming to play here. Are you, um, are you in a position where there's too much on your plate or not enough challenge in your life? And burnout is where this stuff piles up over time until it's no longer the rock in your shoe. The causes of burnout are many. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a specialist in this. But I think we can all recognize when something is stagnating. When you find yourself a lack of challenge or things have just become too easy. So why do them? When you're overworked, especially alliance leaders, content producers, content enablers, if you're taking on too much and doing too much for too long... Uh, or if, you know, requirements are being thrust upon you that you're not really interested in fulfilling, that can be a real cause of burnout. And this is something that affects Alliance leaders quite a bit, um, or, you know, FCs, is that these are often the people who show up to make things happen for your sake. They're not doing it for their own sake. I mean, they may be in, they may be in a position where they enjoy doing some of those activities, but they're not doing it for them. They're doing it for you. And that can be very draining when you're doing something for somebody else and you're carrying it 
for them. This can also be very isolating, and isolation is one of the biggest causes of burnout because it makes you feel like you have a lack of support from others, um, where you don't feel supported or um, you know, embraced for the activity and the effort you've put in. And that imbalance, that lack of equilibrium of work and life balance, a lack of downtime, a lack of time to really enjoy the game yourself. You know, it's a common joke that when you become leadership in an alliance, you have to surrender your undock button. But that kind of behavior, that kind of attitude about engagement with the game is actually just going to amplify your sense of burnout. It's going to detract from your joy in playing the game unless you're one of those people who draw a deep sense of satisfaction from doing that kind of thing. Uh, producing content for other people, working to other people's benefits, organizing, you know, entire alliances full of people. I mean, if you're a type extremely organized and, you know, methodical, being a logistician or a venture capitalist in EVE might be the biggest payoff of all. But if that's not something that you don't wholly enjoy and you find it thrust upon you by virtue of your being the only person to do it or being in a position where you, you know, are you know, contributing in a way that others aren't, it can really be draining. And disequity. When you have an unequal relationship between the invested effort and the perceived benefit from doing that thing. Um, when you, you know, start to feel like you've put in an unequal amount of work for the payoff that other people enjoy, or that it's not as much of a payoff for you, that may be a sign to change what you're doing. Because because ongoing discomfiture, a lack of joy or a state of persistent annoyance and discomfort with the status quo, that's what burnout is. You start to lack joy. Now, it's important to recognize the difference between burnout and depression because burnout can be resolved. Burnout has some easy, direct, and obvious fixes. You can delegate work. You can turn over activities for other people to run. You can set things up and, and inspire people and then give them the tools to run it. You can try different things. You can engage with content or watch somebody Twitch stream for a while. If you don't feel like playing the game, but you still want to be in the world, you can watch somebody else play. There's lots of ways out there to stay engaged if you're starting to feel burned out. But depression is something different, something darker. And it's not always obvious, but it's marked by a sense of despondency, a state of being depressed of spirits from loss of courage or hope. It's dejection, where things don't feel like they're going to get better. Depression is different from burnout. That, des that despondency, that depressive mood, really gets inside you. It can get under your skin and it can change the way your world looks from your eyes and how it sounds coming through your ears. You may find yourself suffering from weight loss. Your appetite often declines sharply. You may find yourself, rather than not wanting to invest the effort to cook because you're burned out and tired, it's that the food lost its flavor. It's not as appealing. Maybe you're just not hungry or the idea of eating seems pointless. Fearfulness, or if you have feelings of anxiety or worry. You know, anxiety is a, it's a heavy burden, and anybody who carries constant anxiety with them, you guys, are, you guys are superstars and you don't know it. And because you manage to work through your day, a lot of the time people don't recognize and they don't acknowledge and celebrate when people who have chronic anxiety or worry make it to the party. When they show up to work on a regular basis, when they carry heavy workload and don't ask for help, you know, people who manage to live their lives in an ordinary way and do these things and don't always want to, they're not carrying that extra backpack, that extra 80 pounds or, you know, 40 kilo of extra weight and baggage and the anxiety and the worry about do other people value what they're doing? Or is what they're doing pointless? So you guys, you don't realize that you're superheroes in disguise because you are dealing with the conspiracy theories you tell yourself. Because that's what anxiety is. 
It's the lies you begin to believe about yourself and about your situation that contribute to all of this and you're still getting shit done. That's Herculean. And, and that's something that needs to be addressed, but you need to recognize when that fearfulness is not just a temporary, does my boss just like me because he came out of a meeting with a sour look on his face? I tell everybody, who's the center of your universe? The answer is always you. But when you look at something through a lens, and you say, did my boss come out of that meeting with a sour face because he was talking about me? Well, obviously, that's the first thing you're going to think if you're in a place of anxiety or fear is that it's about you. When it's infinitely more likely that the boss came out of the meeting because there was something he had to deal with in the meeting he wasn't happy about. It might be the fact that he doesn't agree with the guy who sits across the table from him, or maybe he had to tell a client no, or maybe he's worried about the fact that his wife and kid are at home and he'd much rather be there. Because really... He's the center of his universe, not you. And it's, it's hard when you're in that place of anxiety and worry to get around it. So you need to be aware of when you're feeling anxious or fearful. And you need to acknowledge that it can be a really strong sign of depression. Disturbed sleep is another big indicator, but it's not often insomnia. Usually, when you're depressed, you find yourself waking up early. Sleep doesn't come easy or it's fitful, or you wake up every hour all through the night, and the idea of trying to get more rest and more sleep is just more draining. It, it feels like an anchor around your neck and anvils around your ankles. Sometimes it's hard to stay asleep. Feelings of guilt or a persistent feeling of not doing something right or well or flashbacks and feelings of remorse over past actions, things that have come up to you that nag at you, that harry your every step, reminders of that stupid thing you said to that, you know, person you were interested in or crushing hard on in high school. Maybe it was that stupid quip you made to the person at the co coffee counter, you know, the week before. It could be anything, but you have these chasing feelings of, having done something wrong, wronged someone, or having guilt that follows you. And low vitality, where because you're not eating, because you're not sleeping, because you feel terrible and just useless, a lot of the time you have a lack of energy or motivation. The idea of engaging with the game with life gets harder. These are all things that will begin to weigh on you. And if you find yourself in a low place for a long time, you may find yourself entertaining thoughts of suicide or self-harm. It, it may be hard to imagine the next morning. This is when you really need to be looking at yourself and saying, is this something I can deal with myself? Is, is this a pattern? Because let's talk what depression isn't. Depression is not obvious. It often masquerades as burnout, or general illness, or fatigue, and it's, that's part of the reason I'm making this video. It's really important. I've been depressed. I've struggled with chronic depression. I've been in, in that very dark place where it seems there is no light beyond the current moment. And it's a hard place to be. Depression isn't discriminatory either. It affects between 6 and 7% of all full-time workers in the United States. Many people across many walks of life, CEOs all the way down to the guy that pushing brooms in the warehouse, experience chronic depression, experience depression in a significant way. So much so that it affects how often people take sick days for work. It's just it's not just a mood. It's not a phase. You can't snap out of it. It's not, you know, an attitude you have to improve. Depression is a disease. It's insidious. It lies to you. It gets inside your head and it tells you you can't do anything about it. It's not something that you just get better from. I mean, your experience of depression is a spectrum. You may get very depressed for short periods of time and then find that the next day it feels better. 
and that might be something worthy of a diagnosis. Uh, you know, if, if you find yourself repeatedly falling into a pit of depression and coming out again, that cycle, that rhythm can be extremely draining. It can, it can make your world a darker place. Or you may be in the position where you fall into a deep and dark and heavy pit that seems to have no horizon. And that can last for years. Depression isn't something that you just get over. And it's not a weakness. It's not a reflection on the people who suffer from it. And it's not forgiving. It doesn't get better on its own. Sufferers should seek help and support because resources are available. And there are people who've been through it and they know what it's like to try to tread water in a place where it seems there is no sky. The cost in the real world is real. It's not just people playing video games who experience this. The total economic burden of depression in the United States alone as of 2013 was estimated to be 210 billion US dollars a year in lost productivity, in time off, in mental health and major illnesses. It's a lot of time and money. It's a serious illness. This is backed up by numbers. This is not something that you're doing wrong or something that is wrong with you fundamentally. It's a hard place to grow out of and to get out of. It's as hard to fight in many ways as poverty and amplified by factors such as poverty or inequity or lack of access. You have to be able to ask for help and you have to treat it seriously. We've lost a lot of friends. We've lit the sino way too many times. We have too many containers in space with names on them. Those we've lost to cancer, to accidents, to illness, to AIDS, but a way too high disproportionate number. Way too many containers in space with names on them are from people who've taken their own lives. And this is something that as content creators, as content producers, as enablers, as friends, as pilots, as gamers in this beautiful universe, we have to acknowledge, we have to do a better job of talking about. Do what you can to help and recognize what you can do if you're suffering. You can volunteer to make change. There is nothing more isolating than the feeling that you're alone in your experiences. Don't sit in that dark place alone. There are communities like Broadcast for Reps that you can reach out to that are here to listen and here to help. These are groups that are there. They understand. They've been in the same place. And even if they haven't been in your exact situation, they know what it's like to need somebody to reach out to, to have somebody extend a listening ear or hand or to give you a hug at FanFest at Heave Vegas. There are public resources available too, from your work, from your government, your local municipalities, from the church and other communities of faith. Regardless of what your faith is, there are people out there who understand and who know and who care. Even when it's raining and when it begins to pour, there's somebody out there with an umbrella. And man, you just need to say, I need a hand. And we need to do a better job of stigma breaking. We need to call people out on their bullshit. Yes, this is a dark universe. This is a dark game in which we play. But we have the ability to be the beacons of light. We can call people out on their bullshit when they say, it's just a mood, you'll get over it. Or, stop being a negative Nancy. Or, you know what? Don't talk like that here, you're ruining my vibe. We can be there for those who are suffering. We are all capsuleers. We're all players in this game. There's a person on the other side of that other monitor. And yeah, you might enjoy the salt from killing somebody in space and watching their corpse float away. That's most of the fun of playing this game is, you know, there's a lot of fun in being a dick. But we don't have to be dicks to one another in real life. And we don't need to drive somebody who's in a dark place further into the darkness. Reach out. Talk to somebody. 
There are communities here to help. Wonderful communities. Spam for Heels, The Best of Us, Sixth Empire, and Broadcast for Reps. These are all services, Spam for Heels and Broadcast for Reps specifically, that are, that are really, really accessible and really easy to get to. And The Best of Us is particularly useful for veterans and members of the law enforcement agencies because they've been in the situation that you're in. And if you're a veteran, there's community within Eve here to listen to you, to talk to you, who've experienced PTSD, who've been in dark places, and who've seen the worst of man. And we just want to be there for you. We want to hear your situations, and we want to let you know that you're not alone. Think about that. A game with an MOA of about 200 to 300,000 players, and there are people in the community willing to listen to you. A population of a significant city of people who care and who play this game too, who share your joy and docking, blowing shit up. Thank you for listening. Sorry, the topic got a little heavier there at the end. I really think that this community and the content creators, enablers, and producers in this game have a lot to offer those who are dealing with depression and burnout. I think that if anybody can make a change, we're definitely the ones to do it. But if you know somebody who's depressed and who's thinking of taking their own life, there are resources in your community and your municipality and in your local police force who have professional training in dealing with these situations. Don't let their sign out go unanswered. Talk to someone. Help someone, even if they're not capable of helping themselves. Thanks again. I'm Dre's Doctor. Cheers.